Welcome to section 1.5 quadratic equation. Quadratic equations are also known as second degree equations. A quadratic equation in x is an equation that can be written in the general form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero where a and b are real numbers and a cannot equal zero. Quadratic equation in x is also called a second degree polynomial equation. Okay, so how do we solve um, quadratic equations? There are four different ways to solve quadratic equations, and the first way that we can solve a quadratic equation doesn't work all the time, but I always tell students that um, you should always try this way first. It's called the zero product principle, also known as the zero factor rule. That basically says if you have a factor times a factor equals zero, then one of those factors has to equal zero. For example, if we had three times, let's do, let's, no, let's do x times y equals zero, then x would equal zero or y would equal zero. Because if this were zero right here, and if we're like five, well, zero times five it is zero. Or if this were zero, and this were not, let's say this was seven, seven times zero equals zero. Okay? Let's look at an example. Here I have x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. And we're going to solve this using the zero factor rule. What we're going to do is we always make sure that we always have 0 on one side of the equation. And notice how I have that right there. So let's go ahead and factor the other side. So I'm going to get a different color here. So I have 0 on one side. We're going to factor the other side. And since this is the there's no GCF here. I'm going to go ahead and see that there's one, two, three terms here. And I'm going to factor by the uh, trial and error method. Okay, so x and x do minus 2 minus 5. Would that work? Yes, 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 yes. That does factor um, correctly. Well, that does factor correctly. So now I have something times something equals 0. There's a 0 factor. Um, principle that we can use. So now I know that x minus 2 equals 0, the one factor, of x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. Okay. With all these little equations here, x equals 2, and add 5 to both sides here, x equals 5. So there are my solutions. And I'm going to go ahead and box this in or circle this, but we can check this really quickly. You don't have to do this, but I think it's really good to check for a few times. If x equals 2, we go back up to the original problem here. 2 squared plus 7 times 2, oh, I mean minus, minus 7 times 2, minus 7 times 2, plus 10, does that equal 0? 4 minus 14 plus 10, that gives me negative 10 plus 10, and 0 does equal 0. So that one works. And if I want to check x equals 5, I get 5 squared minus 7 times 5 plus 10. Does that equal 0? 25 minus 35 plus 10. Negative 10 plus 10. And 0 does equal 0. So that one is correct also. Okay, so what are the steps to solving a quadratic equation by factoring? The first thing you want to do is rewrite equation in the general form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Basically we are setting one side equal to zero. Okay. Second thing you want to do is you want to make sure you factor the other side completely.
GCF, count terms. Okay, those are the things that we learned in um, previous sections. Okay. Then you want to apply the zero factor rule. You basically need to set each factor equal to zero. To set each factor equal to zero. Then you want to solve the equation from step three. And then five, check solution in original equation if time. So notice how I checked it in the original equation. The original equation here was this right there, the x squared minus 7x plus 10. I didn't check into there, I checked it right into there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do example one. Example one, you want to solve the quadratic equation by factoring. The first thing you want to do is you want to set one side equal to zero, and notice how that's already done right there. I don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to go ahead and factor the other side. On this side here, I'm going to look for the GCF first, and I see that there's three x in common, and that's my grade common factor. I'm left with x minus three left, and that's still equal to zero. Then we're going to go ahead and set each factor equal to zero. That means three x minus or three x equals zero, or x minus three equals zero. Okay. Now we're going to solve the little equation that we have here. I want to solve this equation right here. I'm going to divide both sides by three, so x equals zero. When I solve this equation here, I get x equals three. And then we're going to check it. If I check this quickly, well, quickly, zero is very easy to check. When I put zero into here, that becomes zero squared, and that becomes zero times three, which is zero. Nine times zero is zero, so zero minus zero is zero. That one checked pretty easily. If I want to check this one, I would do three times three squared minus nine times three. Does that equal zero? And I get three times nine minus nine times three. Does that equal zero? I get 27 minus 27, it looks like 0 does equal 0. So that one checks also. So they're my two solutions. Okay. Again, I'm not going to be able to check all these um, solutions I, just for the sake of time, but I'm going to show a couple once in a while. Not my checked. Um, I checked this one mentally. I checked that one up here. Okay. In part B, um, I'm going to go ahead and solve it by the factoring or zero factor rule. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure one side equals zero. I know I don't have that on either side. Okay, so you can make whatever side you want equal to zero. But I'm gonna go ahead and make this side equal to zero by subtracting four from both sides. That gives me two x squared plus seven x minus four equals zero. On the left hand side, I'm gonna factor it. There's no greatest common factor, so I count the terms one, two, three, and I'm gonna factor this by the AC method. I get negative 8 and 7, two numbers that multiply to give me um, 8, we want an 8, and they would add to 7 by doing this, negative, negative 1 plus 8 gives me 7, and negative 1 times 8 gives me negative 8, those are the two numbers we use, so this is something we did in the previous section. Because I factored the left-hand side, I get 2x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to set each of those equal to 0. So x equals 1 half, x equals negative 4. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to check that, but if you did check it, make sure you check these solutions back up here. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and I want you to go ahead and work on this on your own problem and then when you um, restart the video the answer will be up there for you to look at. Okay, so I hope you paused the video and uh, did the on your own problem and my factor today I got um, 2x minus 1 and x plus 1 equals to 0, those are my two factors. If I said each, each factor equals 0, I got x equals 1 half and negative 1. Again, I went through all those steps there. Step um, one side equals zero, back to the left hand side, there I factored it, and I solved each equation. Okay? So the zero factor property or zero factor rule works a lot of the times, and if you can use that property to solve the quadratic equation, um, that's probably the easiest way to solve them. Now let's look at another problem. And let's look at x squared equals 16. And let me go back to um, let's do this the the old way. Let's say let's, let's, not the old way. Let's do this by a zero factor property. So if I were to do that, I would get x squared minus 16 equals zero. If I were to set this side equals zero, I would subtract 15 from both sides. I get x squared minus 16 equals zero. And if I factor the left hand side, you know that there's no GPF. The difference of two squares, I get x plus four and x minus four. That's my two factors. And that means x equals negative 4 or x equals 4. If I set this factor equal to 0 um, and solved it, I would get the negative 4. If it was equal to 0, I solved it, I would get 4. So I get two solutions. You might notice that um, I got two solutions and both these solutions, if you look at this the original problem, I had x squared equals 16. Did you notice that negative 4 and 4 were the plus and minus of the square root of 16? So x actually equal plus or minus, got a plus here and a minus here, the square root of 16, which is plus or minus 4. Okay? So that's basically the square root property. If you have something squared equal a constant, then that uh, something is going to equal plus or minus the square root of that constant or that number. That can be used, square property can be used sometimes, um, and it's actually easier than the, than the um, zero factor rule if you can use it. So let's go look at a couple examples. And uh, before I go ahead and move on, did you notice that all our solutions, or all our quadratic equations had two solutions? One, two, um, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Well, notice how these were second degree equations, and second degree equations generally have two um, solutions. Second degree, two solutions. Okay. So we expect, generally expect two solutions. Okay, so example two, um, I want to solve the quadratic equation by square root property. And one little hint that you want to use is the square root property. Um, can be used when there is no middle term so like here we have 3x squared and there's no middle term, there's no plus 5x or plus 7x or plus 9x and there's the last term, so we have no um, middle term like before we had a middle term right here with the x term here we had um, a middle term, a 7x. Here we had a middle term, we had that minus 9x. So if there's no middle term, that's generally a little hint to use the square root property. So here I'm going to go ahead and I want to go ahead and set it up to something squared equal to numbers. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. So I get 3x squared equals 15. Divide both sides by 3. So I get x squared equals 5. Now I use the square root property. That means x equal plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay. Only use the square root property when you have something squared equal to number. We could not use it here but we had all this stuff around that something squared. Okay. I'm getting ready to run out of time uh, for the 15 minute allotment I have. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and we'll start back up with example 2 part B.